are very much done. And once the Senate is out of recess, the people who were there before would come back to their seats. So could the attempt to appoint a justice or an ambassador during the recess? Well, I think that he would not be able to get so much done in that time, in the time while they're in recess, because it probably is not, it's not a very long amount of time. <coughs> Thank you so much for an excellent job. Very nicely done. Before we open up to questions, if you want to uh, go ahead and share your artwork. And explain what the assignment uh, requirements were. So in our class, we had to make an abstract representation of our um, topic. And, yeah, and so we kind of wanted to represent the, the whole idea of um, the the president being too close to a monarch and being too close to a monarchy. Um, so this is supposed to represent um, Britain and like like sort of like the king and like the world. Well, yeah. When I talked about the gold necklaces and the purple sashes, this is kind of what represents it. I mean, um, this is what. Even though this is what um, the new nation looks like it will very possibly, if a president is comes to power, then, or is elected and abuses his power, then it might just continue being like symmetrical on both sides, which is what I'm trying to prevent. And I think that the gold necklaces and the purple sashes, and this is the red, it's just, a, it's supposed to represent royalty in Britain. And this is supposed to represent America, like sort of the white is supposed to represent like how it's new and it's sort of a clean slate and they're gonna build the new nation off of it. So, oh, yeah. should I say that? Oh yeah, and this is supposed to, yeah. Oh, you say. So this is supposed to represent like the breaking off from America and Britain. But um, I also thought that it could also mean that these two are kind of like puzzle pieces and they're fitting together so they're kind of like at war with each other, they kind of there is a possibility of them also being broken, but also coming together and maybe just being a replica. Yeah. Okay. So if you want, you can um, like sure you can pass it around. Just be very careful with it because there uh, some of the beads are beginning to fall off. So please be very delicate in handling it. And now at this time, we can revert back to present day, um, and we implore all of you to ask any questions um, about anything that you might feel would interest you with your topic, uh, just make sure that you frame your question with some kind of praise uh, before you go into it. So I thought, first of all, you guys did a great job. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation and your very different points of view. I wonder what you could say, both of you, what would be the requisite of a president for this new nation that you think should be put out there in the Constitution? Yes. Um, what kind of um, either background or what kind of um, what's the name for requisite um, requirements. requirements? Requirements. Education. Background. So for back then. So what kind back of then or today? You can take it whatever you want. What requirements for a president need? Um, Should have to be elected as president. I think he should not have any criminal records, or he should not show that he has done things wrong in the past, because that shows that he is qualified. <laughs> um, and that shows that if he can meet the standards and he will not do anything wrong, he will not repeat himself. And yeah, I agree. He or she should have <laughs> um, very um, like have a good background and should um, I think they should have a good education. So like they should have had a good education. And I think they also should have studied. Well, now they should have studied the history of America because that shows what he learned about and what people went through to try to create what is a fair government and how people would all be equal and how they 
more worried about what a president would be able would be capable of. Should the president take an exam in order to qualify for <laughs> the candidate? Um, I thought you both spoke so well and clearly, um, and I learned a lot. I'm wondering um, what, in your research, in preparing for this, what did you find that was surprising um, that you didn't expect um, during your research? Um, I think that I didn't, so one thing that I didn't expect was in the Federalist paper, um, Hamilton was, instead of talking about his own argument, a lot of what we was talking about was was what the anti-federalists thought and then he kept on just saying how ridiculous that was that's pretty much what like half of the paper was was um, the anti-federalists are so crazy that they think that the, that the president will be like a monarchy and it was just interesting to see how he would rather talk about that than what his own opinion was. Um, I thought what was surprising to me was that From the revolution, the American Revolution, how two sides came about from it. I thought that that was surprising to see how both of them started after they broke away from England and how they both developed sides from one historical event and how they both have different takes on it. And last, one last question. Uh, um, Vaughn? <laughs> I know you both both saw Hamilton and I wondered if you could comment on how that helped shape thoughts on this and what you think about that as a way to teach? Well, I don't think that um, any of, well, I think that when I was learning about the revolution, I definitely made some of the things from Hamilton sort of popped into my head. And also, um, since I was reading Hamilton's work, I was like very interested that I knew so much about him when I was reading it. Um, I also think that you a really great background because I learned about it. Well, it was a very new topic to me when I was 